What's up, everybody? Welcome to the K-Pop Kimchi Podcast, your number one podcast for girl groups with the number one fanboys. I'm your host, Justin Turno, with my co-host, Brian Limper. And we have big news. We do. Huge we, news. We both got a little better tech decking. That's today. true. Fingerboarding. That's true. But also in other news, your boys ranked up a spot. Oh, yeah. Forgot all about all that. In the all-time yep, yep. world K-pop rankings. We were number nine, and now we're number eight. Number eight. I'd like to thank all the fans for doing whatever it was they did, because I don't know First what it was. First thing I have to do is say, no idea how that happened, but thank you to all, all of those listening, because... That had to have something to do with it. All it did was Google us, and well, actually, I Google us. I Googled K-pop podcast, and I clicked on a little thing and said eight. I'm like, wait a minute, we used to be number nine. What's this about? We moved up. Clicked it, moved up. That means we jumped somebody, or someone moved down. Like somebody must have just taken and lost one of those non-BCS schools, and I just don't know how it happened, but I'm glad it did. We're we're on our way. We're almost number five. We are. We're, no, we're, we're trying. Five. I mean, it took us literally like not even a month to get from nine to eight, so we'll be there in no time. <laughs> and the best part is, I don't even know how it happened. No so. idea. No idea. It's not like they like tell you. They don't give you Just like a, keep on trucking. They don't give you like a status report of like, hey, this is what we think of blah blah blah. No That'd idea. Be nice though, right? That would be very cool. Like actually, because then we could actually know what to do to try and move up. You know. You know, I think you can actually like if you pay for it, you can like actually get stats and stuff for that. But you know what? We might have to look into that. I just want to leave it to chance. Hey, it's working so far. So yeah, we had to share that news. We are now the number eight K-pop podcast in uh, whatever. And we're both the internet semi awesome fingerboarders. We're all about the tech decks, and it's actually going not too bad. So I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. I'm trying to think of what we talked about last week. Oh, it was all we Taeyang. talked about Taeyang because I promised we would make this a short wrap up about all the members. And last week we had to dedicate the whole thing to Taeyang because that took like an hour and a half. That took a long while. So we're going to get right into it today and we're going to cover three members today and we'll do the last four next week, mm-hmm. mainly because these three all had to do with like singing and actual musical stuff right the next four they have like maybe one or two songs but it's mostly just acting okay so this is along Taeyeon is the singing group of or singing members of the group solo stuff and the next week is gonna be like just the acting and all that kind of stuff so we'll like list off some of the stuff that they were in mhm so like I said last week Taeyeon she had a lot of music like a ton of music this week we're gonna start out with Sunny She's a lead vocal and a sub rapper who was born May 15th, 1989, and she's a member of OGG. Mm hmm. I do remember that. The most fun fact she was born in LA and moved to Kuwait and then later moved back to South Korea because of the Gulf War. Fun fact Craziest of the day. Craziest fun fact of all time. Also, all these uh, information is coming from K pop profiles. Shout out to you guys. There's a free sponsorship. Come sponsor us. Please. The offer's still on the table. It always will be because you guys are the best. I don't even know if it's like a company or just people I running like, a site. One person, but... two people, no I idea. I really have no idea. But they do a fantastic job. But also, she has two older sisters. So far, when I've been reading all the stuff about the members, a lot of them have older siblings. Not really? as many younger siblings, a lot of older siblings. Hmm. Who are just filled with jealousy. But also, fun fact about Sunny. She has the same birthday as both of her sisters, but they're in different years. Like all of them are? Yeah. Like the same day. That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Except they're just different what? years. So they're all born apparently on May 15th. So their birthday is May 15th, just like, I mean, I don't know, it'd be like 89 and then whatever. Like the 85 other and like 85 80. or 80. I don't, yeah, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. I know, it's crazy. I wonder if they like... That is that like a, that had to be like on purpose or something. I don't know. I don't even know how you can make that. On I don't purpose. know how you could even try to do that, but to have the exact day, very strange. It was weird. Glad it worked out for them. They're connected. Yeah, their parents are just like okay. Hey, Justin gets it. Two of his sisters also have the same birthday. It's true, but, but they're identical. They're twins, twins so <laughs> like, but it's just like they wanted to legit have. I don't even one, know if that's possible. They legit had. They wanted to just have like one birthday for everyone, so they're like, "Forget you guys. You're all being born the same day, so we're not celebrating more than once." Like based off all 
the information I know about how babies are made in the human anatomy, that seems like it'd be very hard to accomplish. A, a lot of knowledge. So yeah, I don't get it. There's a lot of things about that stuff. I'm just like, That's, just I don't know. over my head, other people deal with that. Her uncle is Lee Su Man. So if you don't know, he's the one that like owns SM Entertainment. So that's cool. That's a let's just say that's a good foot in the door. It's true. She was previously a trainee of Starlight Entertainment, which we talked about in one of our past episodes. Mm-hmm. It got, I guess, she was supposed to debut at a group and it like got canceled or shut down. Yeah, and she came back to uh, SM like literally right before the debut as a group and was added to the group. So yeah, yep. Shout out to Uncle Lee Su Man. <laughs> I'm sure, he had nothing to do with it, but. <laughs> yeah, just like but his brother had nothing to do with her w- making Kevlar. True. Also, during her like solo stuff, she's very well known for being in musicals cuz she participated in a lot of musical theater performances. Like that's what she like I was reading about her. She had like maybe like See, the other thing is I didn't include like SM songs. I tried not yeah, to yeah, like yeah. SM station cuz that's kind of like just a thing. It's not really Right. I don't know how to explain You can do it. that research on your own. But she did a couple like SM songs for SM Station, and she did a couple like duets or like features on stuff, mm-hmm. but not really any of her own like yeah album stuff like that. Right. And she also has gotten multiple voice acting roles as well as hosting multiple TV shows, as most of SNSD has gotten. Right. Okay. Cool. Good for her. And that's Sunny. Then we have Tiffany, aka Professor T. And she's a lead vocal and a sub rapper who was born August 1st, 1989. And she was a member of TTS. Mm-hmm. She was actually born in San Francisco, California. So she is one of the American members. That's our American girl. Yep. She has one older sister and an older brother. She was also born in the same hospital as her group mate, Jessica. So that's fun. What the heck? I know. I mean, okay, I guess. <laughs> She was cast during the 2004 SM casting system in LA, winning first place. So Ooh. she must have some kind of talent. Also, I just got to go out on a limb right now and get it out of the way. Maybe the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, she really is. She's the first uh, Girls' Generation member I knew. Like, so, goodness me. First member Perfection. I knew was, was Tiffany. Also, in quotations, I don't know if it's true or not. I put all my faith in K pop profiles, like most people put their faith in Wikipedia. <laughs> When they're writing, as you should. When they're writing uh, research papers for high school, <laughs> and if you're smart, also in college. But it said she was in a relationship with two PMs, Nick Hoon. Okay. I mean, if so, good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Also, another one of the most fun facts. See, this oh, is the boy. best part. I just get it off. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes me seem so much more interesting. Yeah, if you can like go edit the cave up profiles, you guys can put anything, and we'd be like, "Holy cow!" Like, really? Best whatever, right? This is even better than the whole Sunny thing. Oh man. <laughs> Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe chose her as the prettiest member of Girls Generation. Really? Okay. Hey, good job, Harry Potter. I, Harry Potter. I don't know. That's like the most random fact ever, but he's not wrong. She's very pretty. All I gotta say is if you're trying to point out which members which member look for the most pretty member of Girls Generation, that's Tiffany. That's so random. I know. This is the most random fact ever. In uh, May 2016, she released her first solo album, I Just Want to Dance. That just sounds like it's like, going to be like a, a crossover with LMFAO. Yeah. I assume so. Then she left SM in October 2017, and she signed with Paradigm Talent Agency, which sounds extremely fake and made up. That sounds I guess like it's a money laundering album. scheme. She then made her U.S. debut with the single Over My Skin, and it's kind of... Where her solo stuff left off. So now we're going to listen to some solo music by Professor T. First up today, we have I Just Want to Dance from 2016. I'll be honest, I've not heard much music from her, so I'm not sure what to expect. I'm expecting a heavy Western influence. And LMFAO. This is sounding... Didn't you say you've heard some songs from her? Yeah, not this. I don't think I've heard this one. I think when, like, her kind of, Eng- like, American English debut, I listened to a few of those. Mm-hmm. 
Whoa. She's in that upside down world. I will say, I don't know who made this. I feel like the quality of the camera work is not as good as the one that uh, Taeyeon debuted with. Taeyeon's first video was like the like, nicest quality of like all of them. That was like a professional like Something movie about cinematic that. thing. This is like, I don't know if they did it on purpose. But this honestly has the vibes of one of those like really B grade debut groups yeah. that we've watched. Yeah. I mean, it's got like, the SM thing up here, so it must be through SM. Maybe it's just my TV. I don't know, but it definitely doesn't have like the same quality grade as the one that Taeyeon had. No. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. No, you're right. I think so. Like this. Yeah. Like we gotta get those cutaways of a street with some trash. I don't know. Just like I said, maybe it's just. I don't know if it's just an old video or what, but just the quality just doesn't seem as good as the one that... Oh, no. The Tan one was old, too, and that thing was, like, crystal clear, so... And that was, like, low-key her best... One of her best solo songs. And she she's was also... Okay, she first off... Australia. First off, she's, like, in the hills of, like, Ireland on, like, the water. It's, like, beautiful... Not that... I mean, Tiffany's on, like, a beach parking lot, which I'm sure it's, like, California or something, but, like, they really went all out, you could tell, for Tayun's like, where they went to film that. This was just a hop, skip, and a jump over to L.A. on the beach. And it's like, she's like we've also the... said this before, but we've seen a lot of videos. Like, yeah. a lot. And this is just not... I mean, it's not her fault. Whoever no. produced it or whatever, it's just not the quality. And what we have to compare it to we've come is Taeyeon. So Taeyeon. Just... Also, side note, really kind of bothers me right now that she's got this Converse shoes on with these Nike knee pads. Like... We couldn't put a piece of tape over that and unbrand those. It's just weird that they even had the. There brands. we go. They did it. <laughs> yeah, they did. I was like, ask and you shall receive. They probably just forgot that one shot. And there's just like some solo shots in like a room. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Tiffany was also one of the judges on Girls Planet. Oh yeah. It was awesome. She's the best part of Girls saw, Planet. We saw a lot of Tiffany during Girls Planet. It was so great. Let me tell you, 10 out of 10 times, she stole the show. I don't want to pick favorites, but she's pretty good looking. This, uh... Well, this was, this was some, this was, this was some I feel like it was kind of tame for a solo yeah. debut. And the vid... Wasn't bad, but nothing, nothing crazy. It's, yeah, but especially like you said for debut. And two years later, we have this song "Over My Skin," which is her U.S. debut. So I'm pretty sure I've watched this video. And this is after she left us and went to the other company. Yeah, Professor T. Oh this my god, this video is already better. Yeah, I watched this video. I remember it. I wonder if she just like, just, like requested that she had better quality. She's leaving. <laughs> Also, I don't remember if we mentioned it or if it got cut out, but the one episode we were talking about the subunit things, I did read um, on something. I don't remember what it was, but it made me think of this. Uh, OGG really was just all the members that were signed to SM. That's why they were the ones that were in the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we, we, I think we talked about it. Yeah. At some point, I don't remember, but that's why we they made, were the only ones we in made OGG. the smart assumption and we were correct. Yeah. Because the other members weren't part of the SM, so... Where did I read that at? Because I was, like, looking it up, and I, I did read on it, and it said that they were the only ones under, like, the record label or company. So that's why they were the ones that were in the group. It's kind of cool, though, that... I mean, I don't know if they just... Because the contracts of the other members met, they technically still had Girls' Generation as, like, the most members they could have. But it's cool that with the people they had left it was like technically a subunit and not girls actual generation. Girl generation yeah i wonder what made them because some other times people leave and they're just like well this is the group you know what i mean like yeah. this is the group now it just makes me wonder how the other members got back for them to be girls generation i again. just feel like it's in whatever contract they have was it now. like they're like we're if we want to do if they want us to do something or if we want to do it we're gonna they do just it. get that like 10 day contract yeah like D -leaguers i bet you it is something like that that's why technically, if all the people, besides like whatever Jessica or whatever, yeah. like, or there, it's like not technically girls' generation. 
So we've, seen, we've seen groups where like people leave all the time or tons of people and it's like still technically yeah. like that group. I will say, although this isn't like my type of like music that I really listen to a ton, that uh this song definitely has more of like a I'd say a personalized vibe to probably whatever she wanted to make compared to the last one. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Because the other one was kind of just like generic cooking. The other version. one was very generic. Yeah. But this sounds like she probably had a good yeah. role in what it sounded like. And I'll be honest with you, it's not a, the way I expected it to go. I didn't think it would be like this. It's always interesting to me when I listen to solo music from artists, how much it differs from like the actual sound of the group. Yeah. One big person I think it's like that is like uh, Taeyun from or Tae Young from Big Bang. Yeah. Um, His like solo stuff like is nothing White like Night or whatever. Uh, and like nose, live, li- whatever, hip, whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah. Uh, His like super love songs. Yeah, like really ballady and like deep, and I'm like, then they go and they make like bang, 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 and yeah, <laughs> it's just so weird. Or like uh, I've talked about it before about how Winter said that they always felt like the black sheep of uh, YG because their music wasn't the same as, you know, like Icon or 21 Mm -hmm. was or Big Bang or any of the other groups like Blackpink. It kind of had like a more soft sound to it, like a different one. Yeah. But then solo stuff's just like all like like hardcore rap songs. Yeah, I mean, you just, you see the formula. It's just weird. I don't know how that works. Then after Over My Skin, she had the song came out for winter time called Peppermint. The song's very Christmas time. Sounds like a nice candle. I think... I could be wrong. Probably am. I think when she was, you know, kind of like making songs in the United States, Mm -hmm. I think she went on a tour. I'll check. We just, like, didn't care enough. That'd be sick to go see her live. Now I'd be like, oh my gosh, front row. I'd cry. It's just... Solo performs all the Girls' Generation songs. Mm, 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 this is nice though. This beat's nice. It's like nice and chill. chill. Oh, well, actually, she's using red green. I, I'm pretty sure the show peppermints aren't that color. It's just really getting hit in all the Christmas. Uh, Christmas is up. Well, I mean. Yeah, see, she had a tour. She went to Chicago. Dang it! When was it? Uh, two years ago. Oh my ago. gosh, what is this ad she has? Mag- Magnetic Moon Tour. Dang it. Maybe she'll come oh back. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that sucks. She's definitely getting those references in there that are Christmas, I can tell you that. I just feel like whenever they do Christmas type stuff, it like... Does pretty well. Like this is way people appreciate the holidays. I feel like that's the one time a year when you can just release one single and everyone's like, "This is the best thing ever." Like, yeah, it's a single. Even if people like, I don't know, like don't even care that much about like holiday and stuff. They just kind of like like the vibe overall, you know. Just like also, this is our album called Black Friday. (laughs) This has nothing to do with anything, but if you're listening to this. Go watch my video I put up on my YouTube channel for my Magic channel. Because that thing took me 14 hours to make. Holy crap. And I had a bunch of computer problems. It literally took me forever to make. And it was awesome. So, not sure what you Look me up. Go watch that. Give me a view. Because, goodness. That's a long it time. It took me a long time. Like, a really, really long time. Mm-mm. Mm. This is a nice song though It's really chill This is now on the Christmas playlist What a sick beat I hope she made that herself <laughs> She's in the beat studio Beat laboratory Like uh, Rich Brian when we watched him on the Rise 88 thing 88 Rising That was the worst To just watch CLC for like Two minutes, and then Luna at the very end. I don't know. If that was a thing now, would not even watch it. I also just love how this video we got right now is literally just like a, a picture, but they got like this like, like the snow, snow effect. effect on, so it looks like it's like actually like moving and doing stuff. It's pretty sick. 
Somebody graduated from graphic design class. Mm-hmm. Also, just it's go watch the first thirty little... seconds of the video. It's all it counts as a view if you do that. Exactly. <laughs> it, yeah, it's got a little snow effect and then dragged it through the whole image for the how long the song is. Like, all right, nailed it. It worked. Then in twenty nineteen, we have Born Again. I'm pretty sure all the music she like put out after the first song was just all English music. Yeah. Tiffany Young. I might have watched this one too. I will also say waves. the video quality might dip in this because it's getting close to 2 o'clock, which for some reason for my internet router is the witching hour. And sometimes it uh, works and sometimes it, it doesn't. Does. The internet decides to just hate us then. Oh, this song sounds kind of deep. Dun, 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 dun. I really was expecting your music, and maybe some of this stuff will, like, the longer go to sound more Western like than, you know, like yeah. K pop. Man, born again. Ooh. Like, this is kind of Western. I'd say this one does for sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Let's just say this definitely is not Peppermint. <laughs> oh, Peppermint was kind you know of how a banger, many songs dude. are. Peppermint had a nice beat. Loki might have been the best one so far. She has very dark makeup on. She's like a. She has like very she's light like a hair. Princess mermaid washed up on the beach. It is nice to see though that she comes to America and she like does English music and does American stuff, but then she's still like super like. Be loved and welcome back yeah. to Korea to do stuff. Yeah, she didn't just like leave. Or ask to step down from her position. There's like, I'm trying to think, there's like one specific artist that's like reminds me of. I don't know. Man. I mean, it's not a bad song. It's alright. All time low budget, I'd say. But it's okay because yeah, the video the video gets the point across. It doesn't I need think it, it doesn't need a big budget. More money put into the video for like Taeyeon's first video. I, I think that must be the mo- like, most expensive video ever shot. Dude. It's like even more expensive than all the people from Luna got flown around the world. Yeah. That was just like a really impressive song and video. Okay. <laughs> Oh god! Like this whole video is literally just being shot. On it's like just on a beach. A beach. Like she's literally in the same spot. She's like a siren or a mermaid, a depressed prom queen. Although she's being born again. Oh, she switched outfits. So it does kind of bother me that her hair has been wet like this entire video, but I think that's just a me mm-hmm. thing. So I just want to know how many people are just on the beach in the back, like playing with a beach ball this literally looks like she just asked her friend to shoot a video for like, and this hey dude bad. here take my phone shoot I this, got this idea oh we got a blue light it's not bad cool beat i will say out of her and taeyun probably not crazy about like not like instant soloist music i need to go listen to but they have some good ones between i them. will say the last song from this year that taeyun had freaking banger i listened to it all the yeah time. that, that song's was so good, good. The uh, Can't Control Myself. Yeah, that song's good. Oh my good. gosh, that there's, song was awesome. There's good ones, there's good ones. But overall, maybe not like, oh, one of my favorite solo people. Then, we had Lips on Lips in 2019 too. This one looks like it has a little higher budget maybe. It is also inside. Is this like a continuation of the other video? Like now she's, she's on land, for real. Did she like swim to shore and she found somewhere to? Okay, okay. Shout out to the stylist. Like this sounds like it has some legit potential here. Oh, mm. this is nice. It's got like a different kind of sound to it. You yeah, know? it's like a little. I can't really explain it's cool. it, but it's just not like it's your cool. generic It like definitely of... catches your attention more. 
Whoa, this is sick. This is definitely better. Everything we said 30 seconds ago, take it all back. <laughs> well. I will put this on the playlist. This is yeah, awesome. this one's good. This one's good. I don't know. It's like, like I was saying, like, there's some songs like the last song, kind of sound like a cookie cutter Western yeah. kind of poppy sound to it, where this is like different, like, I don't want to say algorithms, but it's like different melodies, different types yeah, yeah, of yeah. things going on to make it sound like not like, oh yeah, you know, like someone just wrote this and put it out because, yeah. you know, they like wrote music for everybody. And this, this is, is definitely the best one so far. I'd say a good example of groups that kind of have songs like that would be like, I feel like WJSN has a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Where just like the construction of the song kind of just goes off. And yeah. Oh, this song's dope, though. Mm-mm-mm. Also, this does have a way better video quality than the other ones. Like, even though she's oh, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bill over here wearing Dalmatians. I've also got to say, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I'm sure I have, because it's like our 153rd episode. 150 second, I don't know. The earring budget in K-pop must be out of this world. Yeah, they, they the always have the craziest earrings. ones. The craziest, like, fake earrings. I don't know. I don't know. It's also always funny, too. Whenever I just have, like, blonde hair, I'm like, man, blonde is, like, the best look ever. But then they, like, have dark hair again, I'm like... You're like, wow, everything definitely back. the right choice to go black like, against. Like, man, it just, I don't know. The blonde does look awesome, though. I swear every time we see an idol and they have, like, blonde hair like how it, Shua has now, I'm like, you're like, wow. Man, this is, like, my... all-time look the best. And then in, like, a, you Never know, go back. a few months and whenever they're, like, promote and stuff and they're done and she goes back to a different color, you're like, whoa, man, I'm glad it's dark again. My goodness. Why did you They really just color? can always have the best hair. Mmm. I hope she literally just, like, made this, like, chilling in her room. Like, I'm say her vids are a little more, like, just, like, straight visuals. Yeah. Which I'm not, made. like, there's not, like, plot or anything. It's just, just like, it. let's just do visuals all the time. Whereas Taeyeon was a distressed waiter. <laughs> or, like, right, whenever she's, was, like, an actress that would, like, fell in love with the guy. That was pretty sick. I that like one was that. good. Best one for sure. All right. So, after Tiffany, we have Hyoyeon. Who's the main dancer, main rapper, and a vocalist? So oh, she has yeah. a lot of stuff going on. A lot of duties. She was born September 22nd, 1989, and she's a member of OGG. She also has a younger brother. So that's the first member I think we have that has a younger sibling instead of older siblings. I just want to interview him and be like, <laughs> what was your life like? Yeah, I know. Do you it's, just try and ask your sister, like, hey, can you talk to Tiffany for me? Is, I do that all the time. Is your life like I'd be a so annoyed. box of chocolates? Can you not get some autographs, some pictures? She auditioned for SM at the age of 11 through her casting system in 2000. Jeez. She's also very skilled at memorizing dance moves. She can often, like, repeat dance moves and stuff after just watching choreo or, like, mm-hmm. dance practices or walkthroughs, like, once or twice. Yeah, yeah. So she can, like, pick up. That's, like, really super quick. impressive, actually. She also knows jazz, ballet, hip-hop, belly dancing, and popping and locking. Just the master of all. Let me just though. say that is true talent, folks. Yes. Wow. She also gets very motion sick, so when they go on stuff like shows and stuff, when they go traveling around, she always has to sit in the passenger seat next to the driver because okay. she always gets sick. Okay. When she goes places, we watched. We were watching the one video of them all driving, and it was six people total, and she was in the very back, back right mm-hmm. next to Taeyeon was on her left, and Hyo Yun was like. She looked so out of it, and she's, like, sitting way deep in the chair and looking out the window, and I'm like, she looks horrible. She looks like she's sick, and everyone else is just kind of talking, yeah. and that makes sense because she probably did feel like crap, and Yeah, they just, she was just putting up with it. I feel you because that's me, too. She like was just, me. I just remember watching her back there because, like, everyone else is just talking and making jokes, and she looked horrible. I'm like, I think they need to pull over and give her some air or something. Yeah, but. she gets really bad motion sickness, so she can't ride <sighs> in the back seat of cars. I don't know why they'd make her in the back, but whatever. I feel you. That's like a, my problem in life. Dude, I mean, sometimes that's just not fun. It's not. Then, in 2004, 
She was sent to Beijing along with Siwon from Super Junior. Wow. To study Chinese. Well, like that was SM's choice? Talk about two beautiful people going to a beautiful place. Yeah, right? just making the world better. I mean, Did they just like come knock on her door like, you got the call up, you're going to China? Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of random. Or like, oh, hey, you're the one who needs to like, talk to all these other people. I was so. going to say, they, they probably were just like, you. we want you to be able to communicate with everybody. You're the representative. Yeah, so get on over here. She was also in a reality show called Invincible Youth 2. Ooh. Along with Bora from Sistar, Ooh. Susie from Miss A, GM from Kara, and Yewan from Jewelry. So wow, cool. one of these things is not like the other. I also did not put her first ever solo single she put out was an SM Station song called Mystery. Okay. So that's actually credited as her first debut solo like music. doing something by herself. But I had to stay true to the game. Absolutely. Stick to my guns. Yeah. Um, no, totally. You ha- yeah. Hold you- up, back all my punches. What other... <laughs> <laughs> what other... Uh, I needed to set my goals. I'm just trying to do <laughs> punk, punk bands right now. Uh, take these hearts in Boy Meets World. So I did not put it on here. Fair enough. So the first song we're listening to is technically considered her second solo song, but it's her actual like first like debut solo song that was not for SM Station. Mm-hmm. So the first song we're listening to is called "Wanna Be" from 2017. Ooh. I feel like I've heard this. Actually, I feel like I've heard all of her songs. You know, I feel like I have too. Actually, I don't know why. I don't know either. Now, I will say, all her songs have a more, like, upbeat type of, what do you want to call it? Well, I mean, you can hear it. She's kind of more just, like, hip-hop. Edgy, hip-hop sounding. She's a DJ. Yeah, later on, she also did become a DJ, and she's DJ Hyo. So, I mean, she, like, legit goes around to other clubs and, like, does DJing of her own music. So, she kind of has that kind of sound in her music. Mm Mm-hmm. There's one song on their new album they have, Villain, that I feel like she had a very big hand in making because it sounds like a song that she would have as like a solo artist. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a much different sound than Tiffany and a much different sound than Way um, different. Way Taeyeon. different. Yeah, I feel like... I don't know. Mm. Even without really knowing when her songs came out, I'd still just like listen to them. Peter Russell Westbrook. What a good cameo. You can definitely hear it in a lot of her later music we're going to listen to. She's like a very dancey EDM vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, though, because like I said earlier, just like listening to the influence of like the other members and their own solo stuff compared to the group stuff, completely different. <laughs> Which is cool. That's cool. Why did we listen to this? I don't know. This one's cool, know. though. Look at it. Oh, featuring this dude. Okay. I didn't know who this is. I'm not sure. I didn't see it on the title of uh, the feature. I always think it's weird when people are just featured on songs. I was like, who are you? I always wonder how that even happens. Like, how do you get someone featured on your thing? Because obviously, like, in American music, really popular people don't, like, feature on songs for people who aren't, like, yeah, also popular. Like, you're not going to have, like, a new group just, like, hit up, like, Justin Bieber or, like, hit up, yeah, like, Adam Levine from Maroon 5. Like, you're going to feature on this song. They'd be like, no, like, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. But I feel like in K-pop, you can find random, well, artists we don't really know. And then it's like featuring such and such. Like, oh, like what is this random? Like, how do they even get connected? Like, how do you know this? They guy? just text him like, "Hey, you want to be in this song?" How do you know Zico? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-mm. Now we're definitely gonna hear some mm-hmm. more dancey influences here, because the next song she had we actually listened to for a video we did with Reddit where we asked people about. Yes, we did. Like. Was that under- kind of city pop? Oh, that's what kind it was. of yeah. great songs to listen to when you're driving at nighttime. Yes, that's the one. And they like recommended me this. And, well, I guess us. And I was like, wow, this is exactly what we're looking for. 
And this I is know. Sober. Came out in 2018. And this is actually the time where she changed her stage name to just Hyo. H-Y-O. Hyo. Then she also um, got signed to Scream Records, which is SM's electric dance music label. Of course. Did not know that was a thing. Seems like they just made that just for her. I mean, hey, shout out to That's that. That's awesome. I wonder who else is signed to it. I just always love... Is like, it Raiden? <laughs> I was going to say, he's probably just... Like, actually, probably it. is. It's probably just like him and like uh, like an office, and that's like the whole thing. And this is the one we were talking about. It reminded me of the one song. Well, of course, now I don't know what the song is. I know, Yeah, I know what but you But it reminded mean, me of the we one found, song. you yeah. found it. I literally can't think of it now. <laughs> you know what's the funny thing about that? I was thinking about it after you left. I was literally just laying in bed and it just like came to me in my head. Yeah, that's how it happens sometimes. But it sounds just like it. Yeah, this is more like a dancey. This song is really EDM cool. Song. Like you can totally see her just like rocking out to this in the clubs. It's like she's all about that life. I remember uh, putting this one on the playlist for sure. This is very cool. We actually did watch a video of her like DJing in clubs like mm -hmm. around Korea. So that's pretty cool. She's cutting all her hair off. The old young. Yeah. Also good to see Yin back doing stuff. Speaking of guesting on things. Yeah, that's a feature. She saved the day. So it's crazy to me how they like make the idols and sometimes in these videos like cut their hair like just spontaneously yeah. but then they have like salon quality perfectly cut hair like that would never happen in real life yeah that seems a little far-fetched she also couldn't be like bothered to set her camera up to actually like film herself upright this is tiktok dancing before they were popular we also do know from our earlier Girls' Generation stuff that we were reading into, that she's like always been very well known as being like a very good dancer. Mm -hmm. Like that's what she was known as in the group as being a great dancer. And even into the New World, she was like shopping for shoes and she like had her own like little dance solo. Yep. So they really played into it from like the beginning of her career. So I mean, hey. Dun, 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 dun. Now they're just throwing stuff. They're throwing these like flared things. What a great song. Scream Records. Then we have another banger from 2018 called Punk Right Now. Now this is a very clubby EDM song. I oh, man, I remember, it's crazy how time flies. <laughs> I know. I remember when this came out and like watching it. This is really when she must have hit that club circuit. This, I think this is actually the song that we watched all the videos for playing in the club thing. Yeah. <laughs> She's just a big DJ here. Mm -hmm. This song's so good, though. Yeah, it's a really cool song. That's steady. So is she, like, funding Scream Records right now? Yeah, Heard and Raiden. In D and E. Yeah, this is an awesome song. Also, D and E is a great duo. Absolutely. For anybody who's wondering, look Absolutely. them up. Absolutely. We're gonna do a whole episode on D and E. That's our next. We don't care about series. Super Junior. Just D and E. Wait till we do our Super Junior one and go through each member of those. Oh my gosh, I was just going to take like <laughs> literally a whole year. That's all of 2023, the year of Super Junior. Seriously. Gosh. Essen just has some legends. They're the, it's the best company. I, I think overall, I think it's the best company. I just think that, I don't know. I mean, I know you can always find reasons against it, but I feel like at SM tries to like keep people around and they also try to keep their members or their artists like doing stuff like it's also kind of it's, crazy it's, that they debuted at Aespa and they've been like doing stuff with them a lot 
they still push Red Velvet a lot of stuff, and they literally and then, just gave Girls' Generation. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, they kind of bring... And then, like, Super Junior has had multiple comebacks that, you know, we've Super watched. Super Junior's got their own record label of themselves. Like, they, <laughs> they, they come back sometimes. And then, obviously, NCT's always doing something. Yeah, they just come back. With, like, great music. Dun, 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 dun. They're just fun song. That just like bass synthy thing. It's awesome. Dun, 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 dun. So addicting. Where's where's her solo American tour? Oh my gosh, that'd be lit. That would be really fun, I'm not gonna lie. I would maybe stand for that one. Especially if it's just like in a club and she's just DJing like Steve Aoki. <laughs> Everybody get up! <laughs> Go play the local. She videos. could like easily do that. I feel oh, like yeah. that would definitely. Like, she could definitely get some solid venues that people would definitely go see her. I want to go see her play at the same place as all Brave Girls. Oh my gosh, that'd be so fun. Except for the guy in the bathroom. Next we have <laughs> Badster from 2019, and this is like a. I don't know. This was like a. It's some special thing that she did, but it was like technically considered like a single she put out. So. Oh my goodness. I don't, like th a, I don't think I really know what this is. I don't think I know. Oh, three. It's like we're entering a video game. We're in a Beat Saber. That's what it looks like. Go. Yeah, the whole thing's like... She's just an Aespa person. Yeah, she's like an AI Aespa person. She's their uh, novice or whatever. I'm pretty sure this is what plays in the background of her shows when she's DJing. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Whoa, it's creeping me out. Oh. Shout out to uh, SM for figuring out how to do uh, CGI characters after this. Yeah, well, this wasn't even that long ago. This was in 2019. That's true. Oh, gosh. Flash warning. Yeah, okay, this, this, is, sounds like something she this is definitely a clubby song. There's a lot of stuff happening. I'm sure them out. This is definitely what we'd watch at like that giant DJ show. And where is that? Like Sweden or something? Yeah. What is that thing called? I don't know. They have, like, like Wonderland they have, like, or called? Yeah, like... I think it is. They have, like the craziest that, stage oh I've ever gosh, seen. That's nuts. But why is she not there? She should be. This is definitely that type of music. And everyone in the audience is beautiful. Or it's like, hey, we just need some new music. So like. Make a sick what? beat and put it on her. Doom, 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 doom. It kind of reminds me, the way the CGI is, it's not, it's not like, or I guess like, it's not like terrible, but it's not like good. It kind of reminds me of watching the music video for like, a uh, Blue by Eiffel 65. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. There's a throwback to any of you who are old enough to remember that. I don't know if anybody is. It looks like the iPhone one when you like... Put, make yourself oh, yeah. like your little character on there. The bit mode it, you got? Yeah, it looks like just like that. Damn. Also, if anyone's watching this video, flash warning. Cause my yeah, gosh. I know. There's like hurting. Oh gosh, I can't even watch it. It's one of those things where it's like a commercial. It's like a, um, this is your brain on drugs. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel that right now. It's so much flashing. Like, there's definitely the club kind of sound, kind of like the last one that's really good. And then there's that point where it, like, cranks to, like, 12. And you're like, okay, this, after a little bit, would make my head hurt. What a crazy That dude. song was crazy. With a crazy video and a crazy sound. I definitely see people in the club like loving that though. The Badster. Her little logo thing's cool. It's really dope. Super simple. Next we have. Oh, I guess I should say this. In 2020, she joined the reality show Good Girl, which is also the show that uh, Yin was on. We got the ultimate hit of the universe, Barbie. Barbie. Then. In 2020, she released Dessert, which was a crazy awesome song, which was like a song featuring uh, Soyeon from Idol. Her girl. Also, so Idol's coming back, and it's going to be sick. We are not ready, but we're trying to be. 
I'm not ready. Oh my gosh, the teasers. We're, we're gonna try. It looks awesome. This song's so sick. I remember when the song came out, everyone in chat was like hyping it up. <laughs> I think this is like the most dance to like TikTok challenge song by other idols I've ever seen. Oh, there, it's gotta be this. It. Yeah. She danced with so many people on online. Very clubby again. Tell me that is her like vibe. You know what I deserve? <laughs> she did dance with a lot of people, unless you're right. She deserves dessert. You know, I feel like we watched this recently for something. I probably did. Maybe we just need to... I was going to say, we didn't do it on that, I don't think. I was like, maybe we had like a collab episode we watched. But I don't think we've done that, actually. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I just feel like we watched it. But maybe I just watched it on my own. I don't really know. Everything's blends together after a while. I do listen to this song a lot, though, so maybe that's it. <laughs> that necklace is crazy. Mm. Also, back to the dark hair. The dark hair is the best. It's always the best option for everybody. <laughs> Dessert. Dessert. You know what I mean, sir? She also was uh, one of the members of GOT. Yes, she was. Her and Tay and the representatives of Girls' Generation. I wonder how they picked that. Were they just the ones that weren't busy? <laughs> I assume that's just how anything works with them. You're telling me Sunny didn't get the call up? I know, right? She was probably singing opera in Kuwait or whatever. She was in a broader musical of like <laughs> Sweeney Todd. So she yeah. Kind of But yeah, she was part of GOT. Tan's part of GOT. So that's pretty cool. She was super sick in GOT. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, she had her awesome pink hair. I like how Sonya's parts literally her just wrapping like sugary foods. <laughs> just dessert. They're again in the back shot of Shop at Roll Machinery. I just imagine everyone back there is like Rod when he's working on the engine and Denise comes over <laughs> and he's just like ting, he's just like hitting it with a hammer. Dude, that's what I imagine goes on back there. Oh, what's up, Denise? <laughs> Sorry. What a sick song. Yeah, that song's very cool. Then, Love that energy. In 2021, we got a freaking banger yeah, called this, Second. This uh, this is what we like to call a one. There's also. Mm. I looked it up at one point, but this definitely sounds like an American song that I've heard before. When I find these, maybe I should start writing them down so I can actually talk about them. I can tell people what they are. It's just tough sometimes because sometimes it just like triggers in your brain and you're like, wait a minute. Like tomorrow when I'm driving to Chicago, it's probably going to pop in my head. And you're going to be like, it. hey, I know what this is. It's like this part. Yep. Not sure what. I'll think of it. If anybody else knows what this, let me know. What a great song. Also, a lot of people. Also, this part too. Mm -hmm. that a it's an Imagine Dragon song. Which one? I'll have, I'll have to look it up. It's an Imagine Dragon song. Oh. This was also probably the second most TikTok. Oh, I was going to say, everyone did something to this. Other idols I've danced to. I think she makes it like her personal mission when she releases a song to... She's like, alright, we need to get every single person to dance to this. But this song is awesome. Also, shout out to the stylist. Also, fun fact that's kind of mean. I just like to call it the golden nugget of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anything. Oh. I saw in a lot of places that she was often voted throughout their career as... The least attractive member of the group. Well, I don't know who voted on that. I mean, I, I don't know who voted, and I mean, I guess someone has to be last, but I don't even know. I 
I guess there's no shame in being last because. I mean, you're spawned a lot of people. I don't know. People. I, I don't know. I don't know. I read, did read that a lot, though. That's crazy to me. But again, it's like, well, I guess someone has to be last. It's okay. She made up for with her DJing career. I was going to say, I don't. It's hard to be the least beautiful in a group when you're the most beautiful person I've ever seen, but uh, it's just hard. It's hard in K-pop. Look K at her go. That's always the crazy thing is when you see that kind of stuff from like netizens or stuff about groups are like voted as the most common. Oh, hey, baby. Speaking of uh, features on everything. BB's awesome. Yeah, she's very cool. So there's like friends, she like hit her up, she's like, hey, you want to be on the song? I got to come back. Hey, over. sis, you busy? <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, Netizen's vote, blah, 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 is the most common looking, least attractive member. I'm like, really, guys? Like, why do we even have to do that? You probably look like a fire hydrant. I also saw where her first album that came out, which was released this year, which put out Deep, which is we're gonna listen to next. It's literally all the songs she's put out in the last like love that energy four years. Just love that energy. One album. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure like sober I hope, punk right now we're on there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that they had like a meeting for it and it took 30 seconds. They're like, wait, what? let's just put everything you did on it. Like, all right, let's go. Sounding crazy. Oh, yeah. go around. Dude. Dun, 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 dun. That Great song is song. awesome. Love it. So, yeah. The album that came out, two thousand, I guess EP, sorry. May 16th it came out, and it's Deep, Stupid, Second, Dessert, Badster, Punk Right Now, and Let's Sober. Let's go. I wish it just had that extra special uh, song of Into the New World by Girls' Generation. <laughs> the remix. <laughs> and then finally, uh, I just said it, May 16th, 2022, she came out with her first mini album slash EP, and it was called Deep. Also a sick song. Wow. This one had some awesome looks in it. I do remember this came out. Awesome. Not, yeah, I mean. And it, she went back to like the dark, dark hair. Yeah, because she kind of came out not too long after GOT. Yes. She also did a bunch of videos of TikToks with these. Yeah, she's, she's just a queen at TikTok. This outfit she has on those. Chef's kiss. Really cool. She's like Spider Queen. I'm not a fan of that, but you know, <laughs> unless she's just killing them all. Do it. We'll say. I like some of her other ones more than this one, but it's still cool. I mean, it's hard to beat the last one. That song's like so sick. Dude, second's awesome. I really like that. And I really like um, punk right now. Yeah. Yeah. Also sober sick. Yeah. She's in the Kim Lip uh the, the, the Kim Lip. Dome. The time we got some real talent in there. Whoa. She's a glitter spider. Oh no. Oh gosh, maybe I do hate this. Got some CJ spiders up in there. Not a good look. I'd rather have the ace was a snake the? instead of a spider. Yeah, this one I was kind of like, okay, I get you're going for a crazy thing, but like, there's a lot going on here. All I know is she's deep, dude. Deep, deep, hip. And the spider stopped that policeman from shooting their gun. And she's got this giant. I just don't really understand her giant hand. black, like, meaty claw. I don't know, maybe she's becoming a meaty claw spider. I think I she's know. becoming a spider, yeah. That's horrible. And she gets hit by mm. a bus. Yeah, her music is 100% way more different than the other members. I yeah, can tell you that. Very different. But definitely like it more than the other members' music, too. Oh, so. favorite soloist in the group, definitely. It's also for us more we see her more than we see other members of the group. 
So if you'd ask us, we'd say she's a pretty popular member. Yeah. But according to a recent ranking I read on Reddit, not the case, but we do see her around quite often. She's really been, I mean, kind of since we got into K-pop, I mean, I guess like, and we've seen a lot of her. Like, I'll say, like, recently, yeah. too, of, like, oh, she has another solo song, like, with SM. And, I mean, I guess that was Taeyeon, too, but... It's, like, really the only members of the group we see are, like, Taeyeon, Tiffany, and... Uh, and her. And Hyo And that's pretty much it. The other members we only kind of see during, like, when they had OGG. Mm-hmm. Or, like, they have, like, old video clips of them or something. Or they, like, special guests yeah. on something. But, like, current stuff, it was really only those three. Pretty much, yeah. So it's like the main people or members we would know, honestly. So I guess next week we're going to find out a lot about yeah, members. It's going to be real know. uncharted waters next week. <laughs> and then, for all of those fans who've been waiting patiently, like Mango, we'll release who our biases of the group are. It's tough. It gets tougher and tougher each week, to be honest with you. All I know at this point in time is Girls' Generation. It's been It's been awesome. It's been awesome, but it's been a lot. Really, oh the genera- generation queens for sure. What's crazy? Two things that are crazy. One, this is what our fifth girls' generation episode. Um, I think so. And then next week will be our sixth and final one. Yeah. And we didn't even cover like a lot of the stuff that yeah, they did. Yeah, there's like the basics, basics. We right? just tried to get through like the need to knows. So that's crazy to me that it's taken that many episodes to get through everything. Yeah. What's even more crazy to me is there's other podcasts, not naming one specifically, that have done Girls' Generation episodes, and they've like done them in one episode, and I don't understand how it's even possible. I don't know, unless you like literally say their names and you're done. <laughs> like, I don't know. They just have a lot of stuff. I mean, Taeyeon got her own episode, so... like, And I don't even want that to happen. It just happened. <laughs> yeah, like that wasn't even a choice. That was just because we had to. So, yeah, there you go. Success, successful soloist. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a thorough dive into the girls' generation pool. Next week, you really get to see what the other members were up to uh, with their solo careers that maybe weren't music. Yeah, a lot of them did a lot of, like, hanging out, just chilling, chilling and chilling, acting. Chilling, a lot of pictures, a lot of actresses. Act, actress. So we're going to be dropping a lot of names of a lot of uh, dramas that I've never seen probably. I'm just going to say if it was good or bad even though I have no idea. So stay tuned for that. Also the unveiling of our group biases. The group bias rankings is so, what everyone wants to know. But uh yeah. I'm glad you guys are here for this ride cuz this has been a lot of episodes. It has been <laughs> a lot. We got one more. One, one more. more. But uh until then We love you guys. We love Girls' Generation. And we'll catch you next week. Peace. Later.